My name is Jules Muck and I got to Venice, I think it was either 2007 or 2008. Uh, I came with a friend who was doing her master's at UCLA and uh, we moved, actually she had a house and she said, come live with me in Culver City. Her name is Greta Waller, she's a great painter. She kicked me out of the house after three days and I ended up, uh, I actually ran out of gas in Venice on Electric Avenue near California. And that's where I stayed. Yeah, so that's how I, ca I came to Venice. And I fell in love with Venice and I started like hanging out in the area and eventually kind of met a bunch of people that took me in. And one by one, you know, I would crash on sofas or here and there. And uh, I used to paint on Californian Electric. I used to set up my uh, big canvases. I don't know why I thought while living in a car it was great to paint these huge pieces, but they were like, like six feet by five feet, even bigger, I think 80 inches by 60 inches with my average. And it's funny because I look at them now because I used to build them right on the corner there on the street on California Electric because they were even too big for the sidewalk. And there's tire marks over some of the back of them from the cars just coming by. And uh, I would stretch the canvas, I would build them and stretch them. And, and I started keeping them in people's like little alleyways and uh, whatever the sides of their houses. And uh, I met I met John Drozak, who was looking for someone to paint his motorcycle, and that was how I got my first studio space. And I I got the space from Billy Bedard, who is a local craftsman, and he gave me his garage to work on the bike because that was something I couldn't really keep on the in the alley and paint. So I started uh, painting there, and I think I met him because I started keeping my big canvases there. But while I was on uh, when I was painting those paintings on the corner, I realize now how powerful it was to be there because I met everybody I knew. Like, I met so many people in Venice just from being, I was out there with a huge freaking canvas and I was painting some really disturbing stuff. Very bright colors, but we're talking like naked dolls with like dollar bills over their mouth and, and crucifixes made of flowers with guns coming out, you know, like I was, and everybody loved it. Someone gave me a show at, at Abbott's Habit, the coffee shop. And that, that night, uh, John brought a bunch of people that were looking for work, that were actually there to buy artwork. And uh, they did, and people bought paintings. And, and um, Simon and Darla, who owns uh, Principatia, they bought a big piece from me that night. And, and the next day I was able to go get a place. And, and that's what happened. And, and it all just started on the corner there. Years later, actually, um, Christine Zabo, the model who lives over there on Electric, she commissioned a mural right there. She didn't know that that's like where I used to sit on the sidewalk and, and lean my canvas up and paint. And she commissioned a mural. And it was so like full circle to be like paid to put my stuff there permanently. And it's still there. And I call that mural like my garden because it changes all the time. Like it always has new stuff going on. and. And I add faces to it, like when it's somebody's birthday and I don't have money for a gift, they get their face in the mural, you know, <laughs> and some little blurb on Instagram. But uh, it's, and I have flowers and all the faces are green, so they're like growing there, you know. And really like the, my story in Venice is like, I do as much as I possibly can for free and for very little money. And I, I paint a lot of my murals out of my own pocket. And I, 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 like on Christmas, I went out on the boardwalk and I did, all these free portraits and and the thing is like people do stuff for me like i'm not paying rent for my freaking art house like they 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 want to support me and i want to support them and that's what we do you know and if only everyone could just cooperate it's been it's been really cool just the amount of kickbacks that have happened like I, i'm not really good at at conducting business at all so my hope is that like if i look out maybe somebody will look out for me and that's that's happened there's so many fucking weirdos here like i swear when you come here and you stay here you get more strange because it's so accepting it's completely okay to be weird it's actually congratulated and uh, 
the more bizarre people are, the more normal they are in Venice. To the point now where like when I leave Venice, when I go somewhere, I noticed it first when I, when I went through Texas. I was in Houston airport and I was like, holy shit, I'm wearing American flag pants. I'm covered in paint splatter. My hair was this big blonde dreads, which in Venice was all like, oh, just another artist. But there, I was such a freak. Like I felt the stares and that's the difference, man. Anywhere else in the world is just, they're a little bit more, a lot more judgmental. But the thing about Venice is you're so accepted that you begin to express yourself more and more. It's like the walls are gone. Like nothing's holding you back. And uh, you can really just do whatever the f expression wise that you want. And I think people love you for it. They're always into the next thing and the weirdest thing, like something interesting that sparks their stuff. I've had so many people make art from my art. They'll film me live painting, or they'll do something with the murals, like people tattooing murals on them, and people, you know, and I've been collaborating with a lot of artists since I got here, and I always like, if someone's got a good vibe, that's more what I look at than even their artwork. It's like, are you chill? Are you pushy? I can't deal with that. Like, are you going to be like someone that I want to hang out with? Then yeah, let's make some shit. There's a lot of lunatics that come in and out of my life. And sometimes they don't leave fast enough. And that's, that's an issue. That's a whole nother story. But that's Venice. And, and I just want to stick it out, man. This is the longest I've ever lived anywhere in my life. And having the little house that I have, it, it makes it feel like I'm supposed to be here. Because I know what's going on with the rents. I know what's happening with a lot of the construction and the building and a lot of the people just putting in their McMansion condos, you know. But I, that's why I love this space. Jason is going to build this, this facility that has some high-end stuff but also low income also a restaurant stores and a huge art space for the community and that's the kind of building we need at 1414 Maine that's what he's doing and it's the best thing for the community and uh, he's been helping me out and then you know there's all these like people that really care about Venice and the artists in Venice and the music in Venice and like my landlord and Jason Teague and all those people are really trying those are the people that are trying to keep Venice Venice like, let the artists grow, let us do what we do, which is make stuff, and get out of the way of progress. Like, trust a little bit of faith that the right people will do the right thing if you let them. And uh, I, I'm stoked that my neighbors let me be where I am, because a normal place would look at my yard and be like, get these lunatics out of here, my kids, this, that, and the other. You know what, what are you gonna do?